Hey everyone, my name is Volker Butzek and uh, I'm very happy to queue in the first session of this year's UI5 Con for you. So we heard in the keynote, there's great innovation coming to UI5 and we all know that with great power comes great responsibility. So here's Jose Sequiera. He will talk about uh, the safety aspects in UI5 development from a more holistic point of view. So without further ado, Jose, the stage is yours. Hello, guys. So, as the colleague were saying, just here to present an uh, uh, important aspect when we talk about developing UI5 solutions, which is the security concept. So, based on that, I decided to create the, the movement of uh, safe SAP Wi Fi uh, using the hashtag to pretty much you know, spread across the world all of these important topics, which is security for U by five developments, okay? So basically what I'm, what I'm gonna talk about here today, it's uh, here's the agenda, it's what is SAP Y5, some definition, where's the objectives of it, bring it to the cybersecurity concept when we develop uh, uh, solutions and pretty much uh, deliver the requirement uh, to show you the blog series that I've created, some uh, episodes, some real case with responsible disclosure, showing uh, some, uh, some, some gaps and some, some missed that were available in your solutions from customers. And talked about the do's and don'ts on when you develop them, some UI5 solutions, some gateway services, some uh, Oreo data producer, and talk about the final output of this whole movement, okay? So basically, what is uh, safe SAP Y5? So it all started uh, when I was trying to re uh, write my first uh, book and on UI5, and I've the, I had a topic to talk about security. So basically, when I saw all of the uh, started to research, the security concept was not really being talked about or uh, anywhere. And also, on the applications that was taking a look, they were the, the security concept was not be, was was not really uh, the focus there, you know? So basically I decided to move, uh, to move all my, uh, my attention to this specific topic and to create the, uh, create the SAP, a safe SAP i5 movement. So basically uh, it's, if, you, if you're gonna have simple definition is to bring the security concept to all SAP i5 developments. So basically when we talk about uh, SAP developers per se, we had many ABAP developments that comes from the back end, and when uh, when the time comes on when the requirement requirement comes from the customers, you have to start developing UI five solutions. But basically, you go into a whole different world where you're going to be a web developer. You, you have to learn JavaScript, HTML, CSS, and all that. And also, there's a, a whole new concept uh, of that when you go to the web, when you become a web developer, that you need to be uh, that need to be taken care of because when you're a regular ABAP developer on the back end, your code is really there. Only the uh, users that get access or can do like uh, a debug on your code will see your code. But when you talk, when you go, uh, when you go to the web, uh, everyone can debug your code in, on on the consoles, on on the browsers, and etc. So any mistakes, uh, it's it's you know it can be deadly. Hackers, uh, evil hackers, love mistakes. Uh, you only takes one mistake to you know leave a, a SAP customer vulnerable. Okay. So basically, uh, we have uh, to talk about like uh, UI5 developments on on Fiori uh, servers. Uh, the main focus here of my presentation would be for you know for the the hub uh, the, the hub architecture where you got a front end server and a back end server for Fiori. I'm not going to talk focus on the cloud here. But focus on uh, customers that have uh, you know, hub fewer implementations exposed to the internet through web dispatcher or etc. Because as as you all know, the UI five uh, throughout the years has become the the major focus on on uh, the front end technology for many SAP customers. So whenever you get the requirement, they want to to have something online or or that any user can access through the web and anywhere per se, they pretty much go uh, with the UI5 development 
or they develop them inside their, their viewer environment and expose this environment for, for their, their customer users to use around the world or, or whenever they need. So this is the landscape I'm gonna focus here. So we have the front end, back end service, the hub implementation, okay? And exposed to the internet this, with the web dispatcher or any uh, proxies relays. But so let's talk about the goals. Uh, basically the, the goals here is to bring the security concept to these developments, basically to the developers that are already done and the future developments as well. And you have to, uh, the upskill challenge, especially for these, the uh, regular ABAP developers when they go to, to web, when you go to the role of web developers and which, when they switch hats, you know? So uh, it's really important to bring the security concept to, to developments and, and, and not just the developers, but the whole company or the whole, uh, let's call it life cycle of your developments, the, the analysts, the, the manager, the functional analysts, everyone needs to have the, the security concept and especially security, security testings of your solutions when you go, when you go, when your solutions are exposed to the internet, because there are many, many, uh, many professionals or, or many hackers or evil hackers or ethical hackers, they're going to take a look at your code and, and, and look for vulnerabilities. You know, as I said, it only takes one mistake. And if it's, if you're developing, especially if it's too complex, or it's too big to test it or to bring the security concept, you should probably, uh, it's recommended to get some external help or someone to, to pretty much uh, pen, to pen testings on your or solutions or environment, et cetera, to pretty much uh, make sure that your solution, when they go live, it's, it's, uh, it, it works well and it's not, uh, it's not unsafe, it's not exploitable, okay? As I said, uh, it only takes uh, one mistake. Hackers love, evil hackers learn mistakes, okay? So when we uh, talk about cybersecurity in SAP world, uh, um, I, I know that most SAP professionals don't really focus on it. You have the, uh, the SAP product with a security response team. So pretty much they, uh, they keep analyzing the product aspect of all SAP uh, products to, to look for vulnerabilities before uh, some uh, black hat hackers uh, can find them and release their security patches, security notes on the patch days. And that pretty much all customers need to, to focus and implement SAP as you have the, the grade, the, uh, let's call it the grade of, your, of the, the security nodes. If it's very high, it's, you know, you have to implement SAP or if it's, you just, you can take your time. But most of the times when you talk about security, you need to implement SAP, all, the, all, the, uh, all, all of the changes required by SAP. But basically, uh, my focus was not on, on, on products, was on customer implementations uh, vulnerabilities. So it's, it's pretty much a little challenging, uh, like uh, unnavigated waters, because when you start taking a look at uh, some, uh, some customer UI5 solutions that were exposed in the internet and, and take a look at this code to pretty much help these customers uh, find their uh, vulnerabilities that most of the time, if you don't have this uh, security concept, you, they will never find. So, and as I said, uh, yeah, just to dismiss a little, the hacker role uh, as an, an, a, common, a common sense, when you, when you talk about hacker, it's, it, uh, everyone relates to something bad or, or some, someone that uses this knowledge to, to commit a crime or something. But basically you have this, uh, the, the divisions of hackers. You have the ethical hacker or the white hat hacker and you have the black hat hacker that pretty much is the easy one. You know, so just dismissify a little bit that one because uh, some a lot of ethical hackers they participate in bug bounty programs. It's pretty much when companies uh, prevent themselves by creating some programs that uh, pretty much invites these uh, these experts to try to to find the vulnerabilities on their solutions and have uh, compensate them financially. So pretty much reducing the uh, the the desire of uh, someone to try to uh, hack or, or, or cause any, any damage to, to, to your environment, to this customer environment, okay? So pretty much, uh, let's see some, uh, some code real quick. So basically when we uh, talk about the, the whole scan, the whole, uh, the whole aspect of when you're scanning your, your UI5, it's, it's, as I said, you can pretty much take a look at the code so, 
So every white, every every page that you have access to, pretty much you can take a look at the codes as as, as the colleagues were saying. And any any vulnerabilities here that, that could be found will be uh, will be used or pretty much uh, uh, exploited to to a point that uh, uh, you know uh, anything can be can be done. So for instance, I'm I'm at the Fury Apps library here. So uh, I don't I don't know if anyone knows, but it's pretty much uh, uh, it's it's development it's development using the framework and also has the EO data producer, which is an important part of the uh, the uh, the security concept. It's it's using Excel data, but you can pretty much take a look at the service, uh, see what's the endpoint, what do you send, what do you receive uh, on this on these uh, on these services. So pretty much the console and debugging application, debugging applications. It's a place where uh, all of eth ethical and black hat, not ethical hackers, we're going to take a look at your applications and scan for vulnerabilities. And there, uh, as you can imagine, many types of uh, mistakes that can be done by uh, by developers. Some of the most common one is it's to leave hard coded credentials here on the code. So. Uh, you would have here somewhere in the code some hard code credentials that could be used, you know, somewhere or to, to log into your Fury environment or your SAP backend or whatever. So, and to take a look to do these code reviews, I know that's not really common on uh, on all, all all companies, et cetera, but it's a really important thing, especially if your application is going to be uh, 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 shown to the outside world, especially when we talk about standalone Fury applications. Uh, when you're in, when your your UI5 applications are inside the cloud, you're a bit you're you're most, you have a safer environment. But as, as I said, I'm focusing here on the pub implementations, which customers are not in the cloud and they're exposing their UI5 solutions with uh, with Web Dispatcher and all that. And I've just prepared a simple a simple demo here. Uh, for instance, so another big, a big mistake that I, I see that most of uh, developers do uh, for many reasons is to develop a custom uh, login pages. When you pretty much the user, when they see this page, they're going to see that it's a, think about it's a regular login screen, just like the Fury Mart environment per se. But when you start taking a look at its code, you can see that it's a page that is already logged in uh, on the back end, but you just have an app, a, a, a login screen, let's call it. That's why I used to call it a fake login screen, a custom login, but it's a fake login. But when you take a look at the code, you just see that, uh, for instance, for example, the user and password that I put here are going to be sent to to this uh, to this backend service, and uh, and going to be uh, this is the only check that's going to uh, go to target to my next view or whatever. So as as you know, we can just manipulate as as you want the code here. You can just comment and uh, comment everything, and just if you want to just navigate, you can just navigate, activate, and uh, whatever you do here, you press the login button. You just you just going to navigate. So these uh, custom login screens are also a, a big point of uh, vulnerability when you talk about the developing UI5 solutions. So please uh, be careful for that one, okay? So let me get back here to the, uh, to the blog series. So as the, uh, this analysis, this, as, I, as I showed you guys, uh, take a look at the code, take a look at applications, the vulnerabilities that were commonly uh, created or commonly being, uh, being uh, that commonly happens on the UI5 the buttons. I started. I decided to create a two out outputs of this uh, hashtag safe SAP UI5 movie. I decided to create first the, the blog series, like the series that we see uh, on uh, any stream services. That pretty much I created episodes for each episode with responsible disclosure, not showing the customer, not showing the uh, the uh, anything about the the. The whole uh, the whole development, what 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 the server is, etc. It's just showing uh, the mistake that was done, uh, but uh, before sending also these customers and uh, and EDV SAP uh, vulnerability report for all of uh, everything that I found. So pretty much for every episode, I show some some of the mistakes and examples of uh, something that can be done wrong if you don't have that security aspect or security concept on your developments on your solutions. It, it, it's not going to, it's going to pass on. It's going to be forgotten to take a look at these, these, uh, these uh, special, these vulnerabilities that can be done. So when it goes live and it's done, if you, if you, there's a vulnerability there and you don't find 
it's going to be there for a while uh, until someone like I did notifies you say, okay, here, here's, here's the issue. Here's the issue reputation for on, the, on this uh, blog series. Uh, you can, you can, uh, I'm going to show you some, uh, some, some pages uh, in a while that you can see the blogging, but it's also all hosted on SAP blogging community. Also on the security uh, topic. Uh, I'm a featured contributor there as well. So you can see all of the episodes. So we have many, uh, many cases uh, like hard coded credentials that was left on code that could access uh, a backend servers. Uh, some, some services that uh, for attachments handily on the old data services were not, were, was not uh, uh, really uh, done in a proper way that uh, all of the attachments uh, could be extracted by a simple old data call on any, uh, or like a Postman or even in your browser, you can download documents, download the uh, user uh, information. Uh, and there was many, uh, many vulner vulnerabilities that were found, all of them focusing on uh, UI5 solutions and also Gateway. Uh, it's also, I know that it's UI5 come here, but the Gateway, uh, when you're developing Gateway services as well on the backend, the security concept, it needs to be taken care of as well. Especially if you leave uh, open data services, then you don't pretty much filter. Uh, uh, you, you don't pretty much check for filters uh, and see if it, if it's coming anything on your filter. You just uh, for 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 example, when when you have like a, an ABAP code and you just uh, when you execute a function and inside your ABAP code is gonna look for the parameter. But if you don't send any parameters, I'm gonna select everything. I'm gonna do a select all. So in Gateway, this can happen as well. So sometimes uh, developers forget to pretty much validate this kind of thing. So when you just uh, do a get on any specific service for one uh, entity, for example, you're gonna get uh, everything that this entity has. Like if you're, for, for instance, if you're, you have like, a, you have a low data uh, services that has a uh, material or, or price entities there. And if you don't validate as well, and your service is open uh, to be accessed uh, uh, by the, uh, the outside world, let's call it on the internet, anyone can pretty much take a look at your data services. And as they don't know uh, the parameters, which parameters to put on your service, they're gonna pretty much try to execute a get on all, all entities to see if it, if it returns something, you know, that can be used later to, to be used as parameters on other services. So it's really important to keep your gateway environments and uh, safe as well and pretty much really think uh, about the, the security concept of it uh, and also uh, an important mistake that it's it, uh, I need to bring it up it's especially to the reusable data services there are some uh, some uh, some some applications they like to use uh, reusable data component or data services for instance I have a, a UI5 application that uh, does scenario A, and I have another application, uh, a web application that does scenario B, but they both use the same uh, backend uh, old data services. But when you're taking a look at this uh, UI5 code on application A, you're gonna see the metadata, the metadata for these old data services. And as you all know, the metadata for the data services, it lists all entities. So if, if it's an entity that's not reused in application A, you can still, uh, uh, execute a get and still take a look at this metadata, which is uh, when you analyze, when you talk about security, it's, uh, it's one of the first places as well that's gonna get looked. You gotta look at the metadata, see what services that they have. Uh, sometimes by the description of the entities, you can imagine what this entity is gonna do and basically focus on these, uh, on these, uh, and this research on this specific entities based on what they want to exploit your company for. Uh, so basically when the, on the example that I've showed pretty much when I had the custom login screen, when I had a service that pretty much uh, all data service, they're gonna take my user password on my screen and send it to the backend to do any type of validation and then it comes back. So imagine this service. Uh, one other thing that can happen as well, that this service, this all data service, if you don't have the proper layers on it, it can be brute forced as well. So for example, uh, let's say that this backend, uh, it, it, uh, there is some code then on the backend to pretty much see if the user and password I've done on my screen are valid or not. So if I want to see these, the user and password for, for any reason, you pretty much can develop some, some bots or whatever to keep executing these other services passing out of, all of available 
uh, characters that can be used to, to pretty much see the return of these services. So you pretty much can automate that to see, okay, so uh, then I can, uh, I can pretty much get the user and passwords for all of the environment, which is something that it's, uh, it's on an episode, but, it's on, but not on the blog series. It's on the fine output that I'm going to talk about in a little bit. But basically, uh, I recommend you guys take a look as well. There's also an SAP community, okay? But it's very important. So uh, another important thing is that, uh, as, as I said, the hashtag save SAP Y5, it's to bring the security concept and the upskill uh, needed for all SAP developers or SAP professionals, that not just developers, to bring the security concept and in to upskill themselves to pretty much create safer solutions. It's not something that, uh, uh, it's not a local mistake or, or something uh, done on a specific region of the globe. So uh, here, I just wanted to show you that it's pretty much uh, a, global, a global view. And so it's, let's call it a global issue. So maybe the same mistakes were done in, in applications around the world. So as, as you all know, we develop on, on, on the same, uh, uh, using the same code and etc. So this comes to show that this the, the global upskill challenge, the global security uh, uh, topic needs to be brought up to every SAP customer around the world and everyone that works with SAP or uh, the, deliver the requirements to these customers. So pretty much, uh, I just I, as I cannot show the, these customers, uh, uh, this company's uh, names or what, uh, what area do they work and et cetera. I can pretty much show what region around the world they, were, they, they are located to show that it's pretty much uh, the, the same mistakes are done in developments around the world. So that's why uh, I decided to, to bring this topic also as well to talk about the UI5 pan, as I know that has a global reach and it's gonna reach uh, uh, professionals around the world. So it's important a topic uh, to talk about security and upskill all of professionals to specific, uh, to specific security concepts, okay? So with uh, some responsible disclosure, I bring here some examples of these series and uh, everything that was found. So as I said before, a real example was for, for one of data services that, that was in proper development and, and handled for attachments. All the attachments could be uh, could be uh, exploited or pretty much downloaded. So here uh, on the left, you have a, an example of uh, one user's passport and pretty much all of the user's passport could get downloaded, could get extracted. So pretty much uh, uh, I've shown uh, how to this customer, uh, how, that, how, could, how easily it was to pretty much uh, get all the user information. And uh, as you can see uh, on the other, on, on the other uh, images, uh, pretty much some, uh, some uh, some old data service as well, some UI5 applications that could uh, download uh, invoices, uh, see prices, uh, uh, materials, uh, the sales history, uh, and even username and passwords that were keeping, gonna uh, keep track on, on some applications on the back end that by taking a look at the metadata, you could discover that. So sometimes when you discover the problem, it's pretty much like magic. When someone reveals you the magic, it, it, it becomes simple, but uh, if you're doing it and anyone, no one knows, it pretty much it, it's something that people are gonna think it's uh, something from another world or it's too complex. But when you take a look at the code and see the mistakes, you see there's something real simple like a, a hard-coded credentials, uh, some uh, that's pretty much this uh, custom login screen, uh, pretty much selecting everything on the entity sets and returning to the application, even if it's not displaying there like for search helps and stuff like that. So it's pretty much this, uh, the small mistakes, it can take, a, uh, it can have a big damage on these SAP customers uh, around the world, uh, especially for, for some of them that, uh, that has tra the traffic of user on them or their pure environments are really big. So it pretty much to bring this uh, server down or pretty much exploit and pretty much release these user informations or use on any other type of attack, it's, it would be really bad. Uh, especially here, uh, now I got a little time, especially here uh, nowadays due to the pandemic, uh, the security concept, uh, about the, UF, the security concept, it can be brought up to, to your personal life as well. Due to the pandemic with uh, increase uh, of, uh, 
of users coming to the digital world that were not before forced because of the pandemic. And some of them are not really, uh, uh, that doesn't have any excuse or understand anything about security or even about technology. So uh, the attackers, the, the black hackers or the scammers or, or et cetera, are really uh, increasing their level of attacks nowadays because uh, the, the user base is not really aware of uh, what could happen. So, uh, so as I said, um, we're talking about here at UI5Con or uh, the SAP, but it's something that you can uh, bring to your personal life. You can spread to your, to your colleagues, to your friends, your family, understand, explain a little about security, about technology, what, what's, what to do, what not to do. Because uh, as I said, as, as for us uh, technology prof professionals, it seems really easy or, or it's, it's, you know, it's something that no one would believe because it's real simple, but, uh, but believe me, someone, if a uh, attacker or scammer uh, says something to someone that doesn't understand technology, they will believe it. So uh, the security, the hashtag safe SAPY5 can be even spread a little larger to pretty much bring the security concept uh, anywhere that you go or even inside your family, your friends, and especially in your SAP environments, your customers and et cetera. So let's talk a little about the do's and don'ts, uh, let, get, getting a little technical here, uh, especially uh, like compiling all of the, uh, all of the, the, the applications that have, that, have, that have analyzed, that have uh, pretty much the, created the reports to, to send out to these customers, to SAP, to everyone uh, on the loop. So pretty much, uh, as I said, the do's, the important, important part is to pretty much, you have the security testing phase on, on, on your solutions. Uh, to help to promote the security awareness on your, in your customers, uh, especially when you get like, you're trying to sell a, a project or, or whatever, and your customer is gonna see, oh, I have, you have like three days to, to, met, to like performance testings and security testings, and some, and some customer are not gonna understand, oh, but why are you, you pulling this here? And maybe to, if you promote this and pretty much aware of this customer of the, the dangers, and pretty much I think that's something that needs to be brought up. Uh, as we all know, uh, SAP projects can be, uh, you know, a little messy. You, you need to de you deliver the requirements uh, as fast as possible, but it, but sometimes some small mistakes can cause big damage, you know, because when you have like a UI web development, it, it, it's already, some of it's already cached on, on users if someone accessed before. So if you left a hard code credentials, every mistake, it's, it's going to, still going to be there if you don't block or delete this user, for example. <clears throat> and pretty much the, the capture uh, capture that's really used nowadays, it's not really a, you pretty much have to have solid captures, but because if you just have a, a, a front end capture, for example, just validating your 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 user to not to be like a robot or something, and then you validate, but then you have like a button on your UI application to press to execute something. But if the, uh, the, the, the black hat hacker or anyone can pretty much take a look at your source code and see, okay, you have these uh, captures to pretty much validate and, and hide or, or make it secure. These are data services. Okay, but now that he, he already knows your data services, he can pretty much use it as he wants, attack or whatever. You know, if you just do front end captures, it doesn't really help you on, on, uh, on, on make you safer or pretty much to make this service safe as well, okay? So uh, as I said, uh, to think about security layers, especially in your services and your APIs and et cetera, to protect against uh, denial of service attacks, which pretty much when uh, multiple, uh, multiple connections come through your server that pretty much uh, brings them down or pretty much prevent regular users from using your, your, your solution, which is it's a, a type of attack which is really common nowadays. And to use standard logins, functionalities, and uh, and user roles. Don't use custom logins or fake logins. It's it's they're really vulnerable. It's it's really hard to create one that's actually safe. Yeah. So pretty much the don'ts. Uh, it's it, as I said, it, it, it gets a little. Uh, you know, you're gonna think it's a little obvious, but it's important to pretty much bring this uh, this talk with us. Always uh, scan your code or or your colleague's code to and then see uh, hard coded credentials because uh, back in the day, uh, based on the, the upskill, no one really, some professors don't really know how to use the data models. They pretty much leave the, 
the user and password on the code to execute the data call on the back end. So it's something that, believe me, still there are a lot of codes uh, around there that has the user hardcore the credentials. Uh, don't leave the OL data service too open. Uh, the metadata will be scanned. So always check for, for filters and the names that you use and, uh, and pretty much think about the, the, as the data service has a metadata, uh, sometimes in, in, some, in some environments on some solutions, uh, as, you know, as you all know, UI5 with, with, with uh, old data and pretty much it's not the only way to go. So pretty much you can uh, uh, think about and, and really draw and really see the need for, for, for old data and this, and this applications are gonna be hosted on, on the internet and, and decide. Uh, as I said, filter the custom logins. Don't do that. The fake logins, as I as I call, uh, especially if you're if you're if you have like a really important solutions. Like for like for some examples, some customer have a UI five uh, applications that pretty much are the heart of the company, and some of them use custom logins. As you can imagine, they were not safe at all. So if your heart of uh, if the heart of your company is not safe, then you know what could happen. Uh, and try not to return sensitive information on, on these data services, on this specific uh, application that are hosted on, on, on the internet. Pretty much uh, try to, if, there, if, you're, if you need to traffic any sensitive information about the company, uh, uh, you need to really take, take the security concept to really design something which is really safe. You're, you either promote the cloud to go to the cloud, use a BTP to create a your application there that's gonna go to the cloud connector and uh, pretty much, uh, as I said, to help to promote the cloud, okay? So this is something that's uh, it's, uh, really important to these customers that are still with on-premise Fioria uh, environments uh, using the hub implementation, uh, that, as I said, and uh, are sometimes really vulnerable, okay? Uh, so uh, basically uh, I've created of uh, I have every, every uh, all of these uh, topics that I said, all of these, uh, these episodes that we talk about in Safe SAP Wi Fi, I've created the main Safe SAP Wi Fi page, which is safe SAP Wi Fi.app.app. So, I'm pretty much putting everything that I, I've, I've, uh, I can see around the web uh, uh, on the topic or something that can bring uh, this security upskill challenger for, for developments and all, all types of SAP professionals. Okay, something uh, links to the uh, vulnerability uh, uh, when if you found something vulnerable in a product or whatever, the, all, the, all the official SAP channels are, as well as are there. Uh, some bug bounties, uh, uh, web pages and etc. So please take a look and, and also visit. And if you want to contribute, you can see on the, on the, on the top of the page, all my contacts. <clears throat> That's, uh, as I said, it's hashtag safe SAPY5, something that can be uh, brought up to not just the SAP world, to, but all of anywhere to bring the security concept. And you can also contribute, bring, uh, creating your content, creating your, uh, your blog post or, or your article or et cetera. And if, if you think that it's related, if you want to, to see it here, just, just uh, send me a, a message uh, I'm gonna be happy to post it here to pretty much uh, have the uh, demand page, okay, to these, uh, to these, uh, all of these uh, security concepts on UI5 solutions. And uh, as I said on the beginning, uh, which was, was the kind of the final output of all, all of these, uh, the movement of SAP SAP UI5 and how it all started back there. So I've decided to, uh, in a while, uh, together with all this work that I was doing, and together with all of the research on these environments, creating the vulnerability reports to send to these customers so they can now be safe and their, their UI5 solutions can now be safe and they, uh, the, their data will not, won't get exposed, their user data won't get exposed. So uh, I had the idea at the end to pretty much continue to write, but some, in a way that it can in, even impact more than uh, just uh, some uh, regular uh, articles or, or doing some lives or et cetera. Something that, that it's more, uh, let's call it, it's more solid, it's final, it can, it can be accessed anywhere. And sometimes people don't really want to see like 10, 15 or even 40 minute videos. So pretty much the final output 
was the my my I created the ebook about this whole this whole uh, solution, this whole SA, uh, safe SAP Y5 movement, which is called the UI5 Hacker Book ebook. It's so it's pretty much it's free. Uh, it, I'm releasing here today, so you can uh, anyone can download it in Portuguese and English. So I'm, I plan to pretty much uh, translate in other uh, other languages as well. But what is covered on, on this ebook? It's only like a hundred pages long. It's not long. It's not it's it's uh it's not boring. Let's call it like that. Or oh, one of those big pages, big ebooks that you're gonna you're gonna read and anyone cannot uh, doesn't have the interest to keep doing. So what 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 is in there basically? So I got some as a, as on the book. I have the uh, I don't have the, the time like I have right now. I can do some extra history and background on everything that I did why I did it and how I did it and the motivations and etc. I had some four extra episodes that were not on the, uh, the, uh, the community uh, blog posts or articles. Some extra episodes from also some with the same responsible disclosure, uh, some big vulnerabilities found that were, were solved and, and some especially uh, please take a look to see and learn from someone else's mistakes and the, the, the don'ts and and as you develop this type of solutions. And it's, as well, uh, about the recommendations as well, we cannot just talk about the problems. We can also bring the discussion about the, the recommendations, what to do and not to do, the do's and don'ts, like I said here. But in the book, I have more time to pretty much write and, and, and uh, to get a little more contact with you that's gonna read that uh, pretty much uh, what, what to do and not to do, how, you, how you, your thought process should be and, and pretty much uh, what, what you need to consider and how to bring the security concept inside the company uh, to pretty much uh, to have the uh, overall security, uh, uh, let's call it a mindset around all of the development, especially the ones that are going to be exposed to the, to the outside of, of your or company's uh, servers or, 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 or network, let's call it like that. You can say if it's an application, an app, an, a mobile app, or, or an interface, or API, or whatever. You can just if you bring this this mindset and concept, it's I'm sure that uh, some of some of these mistakes will never happen again. Okay, so pretty much the uh, this ebook you can download it in, at, at the uh, ui5hacker.app.app at uh, a web uh, website. It's in Portuguese and English. All of these, uh, the safe as the safe SAP Y5 uh, .app .web and the Y5 hacker .app .web, they're both uh, UI5 uh, pages developed using UI5 as you can imagine. And you pretty much you can go there now or whenever you have some time and download the, the, the PDF. It's free, you don't have to register or anything. Just read, send me your feedback, and I'm going to post it there as well. I'm sure we can uh, debate and, and Bring the security, uh, the security uh, uh, concept, the security mindset, or solutions and debate to make it something that's going to be stick to the community and it's not going to get forgotten around the time, especially now that attacks are getting higher every day. Okay, so that's it. Thank you, and uh, hope you enjoy this presentation. Thank you, Jose, for uh, this interesting session on a hot topic. So um, there were a couple of questions coming up. Um, one was, um, what key advantages do you see that the cloud might have as opposed to on-premise solutions, including UI5 and Gateway? I think if you're, if you're focused on, the, on, on these type of applications that I've found, some of them are standalone applications uh, that uh, uses this, especially on the custom login uh, section. So pretty much when you go to the cloud, you have to have forever application. It's pretty much recommended when you go th through all, all the authentication, the standard authentication process that you have to log in. And, and then the, uh, the, uh, the cloud connector is gonna take care of this, uh, this old data connection between your application and your backend. It's, gonna, it's not gonna be like a direct call because when you talk about standalone apps, they're exposed to the internet and anyone can find. The old data services as well are, are exposed. So the old data services are really the, the source of information that you can extract or, or you can input or you can download data. So pretty much 
around inside the cloud, you have uh, these uh, the safer architecture per se that uh, that compared to the uh, to the on-premise solutions. And also, we have many other features when you go to BTP to development to development solutions that rather that you, when in your on-premise uh, environment, you you're, you're kind of limited to what your pack, uh, support package levels were net net weaver versions. So pretty much as SAP is promoting the cloud, when I think on the security concept for, for especially for UF5 solutions, uh, going to the cloud is it's uh, it's an important uh, it's an important topic or an important uh, 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 let's call it approach uh, for for these safer solutions. For example, if you just want to create a page for your company that uh, they want to pretty much uh, see a list of your products or or something like that, and it would be uh, maybe if you go, you go, you can go a simpler way, but of course, with this was a safe uh, old data services. But uh, I don't, I don't want to get too deep here. If if has some one other questions as well. Yeah, we all know it's safer above the clouds, right? No, I'm just joking. <laughs> yep. um, another one that I also have a personal uh, interest and in stake in. Um, where do you see tests coming in here? So testing a UR five application. Um, how would you, or to what extent, do you consider tests being a vital part of UF5 security? I think that uh, especially when the uh, when I say security, also to pretty much some code reviews, and uh, especially there are some things that uh, when we talk about your data services, they're really open. It's if someone really uh, take a look at it and study the metadata, so probably they will never discover and. Uh, also, performance testing, which is something that uh, uh, it's not really based on my experience in taking really good care of. So on, on this blog series, uh, also on the ebook, on the on chapter 10, uh, I pretty much use JMeter, which is a tool that's used for performance testing and use it to show that uh, as well for some old data services, which are heavy, let's call it heavy old data services. With, uh, that, that pretty much uh, the, uh, returns timeouts or it really takes a lot of time to, to select something on the back end. They're, pretty, they, they're probably going to get targeted as the, uh, the services that you're going to you know, get multiple accesses uh, at, at the same time. I use an I use in ID, ID service, SAP service that we use for training and pretty much uh, point at the JMeter for 3,000 users at the same time as executing these data services that you know, for some time these the services were unavailable and regular user wouldn't leave use. Of course, it's not a tool that would get used to, to attack or whatever or something like that, but it's pretty much uh, some, uh, this, this type of concept to, to, to do performance testings to see if your data services are really, really fast uh, and take a look at the code to see uh, if, uh, save the, some code reviews to, to, to do not leave something that on, on, on your front end code that's gonna get shown on someone's browser that's gonna that's probably gonna be used against you, like hard coded URLs, hard coded users, or any hard coders. That I found some some crazy things leave it on left on the hard code. So this type of things, I think. All right, Jose, thank you. Uh, you can, I can tell you're very passionate about the topic, and I hope you'll continue to educate us all in that regard. So um, thanks again for the session, and you all out there, stay tuned for the next session with Marius Ubat coming up.